Hi, Bloody Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a fantastic movie, R.I.P.D. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. The big, fat monster who runs away with the case, chased by two detectives from the afterlife department, Roy Pulsifer. No, that's not our main character. Here he is. Mick Walker, who four days ago didn't even know about the afterlife. As he takes aim at the monster that's running down the wall, he's crushed by a car, but he doesn't get a scratch. Actions three to four days ago, Mick is in the backyard in the cover of night, burying huge chunks of gold and then planting a tree over them. In the morning, Mick is awakened by his girlfriend Julia, saying she has beaten Boston's best detective. She asks why there's an orange tree in their yard, joking that it won't survive the winter. Mick leaves for work and the girl goes out for a run at an easy pace. At the police department, Mick is talking to his partner Bobby. They are whispering about what they will do with the gold. It turns out that Nick and Bobby busted up a brothel and found gold there, which they decided to keep for themselves. Mick buried it in the backyard, but he doesn't want to keep the gold and will return it as evidence because he doesn't want to risk his happy life with Julia. After supporting Nick, Bobby says goodbye to his boat and decides to surrender his gold. Dispatch reports that they've located Garza, a dangerous criminal they've been looking for. Nick asks Bobby to give an inspirational speech to everyone. Bobby wishes everyone not to die. Nick asks everyone to wear lucky bracelets, alluding to the Silver Street Christopher bracelet Bobby got from his grandmother, because Bobby says it keeps bullets away. Nick says the bulletproof vest he's wearing chases away bullets, and the bracelet chases away girls. The SWAT team arrives at the pier warehouses, the storming of the building begins. Bobby shoots the door lock and Nick gets rid of two. As he walks down the hallway he is shot at, but he wounds two again. He sees Garza and chases him to the roof, but he escapes through the south window. Bobby shows up at the open door and tells Nick he won't let him surrender the gold. Then he fires a clip of bullets at him and he falls several stories straight down. After waking up from the fall, Time stopped around Nick, even the bird in flight froze. A portal opened in the sky that grabbed and lifted only Nick into the sky. He is caught either in a human conveyor belt or in a wormy apple from within. As he gets as close as possible to the blue sparkle, he is pulled into a room where a girl in a police uniform is waiting for him. She tells him he's extremely lucky, because only non-corrupt cops get in here. And she puts a gun on the table and greets Nick on Ghost Patrol. The rules are simple. They catch monsters who must undergo a legal trial and a term of service of 100 years. If Nick agrees now, will be sent back to Boston. When Nick agrees, she explains to him that this will not work. He is filled with a thirst for revenge and hatred. And while Nick is making excuses, she takes out a folder with data about his whole life and asks him not to screw up because of the recommendations of the department he will need in court. They bake him an afterlife department badge on his chest. He follows her, but when he leaves the room, there is no floor underneath him. The girl leaves and asks him not to be a coward, but to follow her. After walking across the invisible floor, a lot of cells with prisoners are waiting for him outside the door. In the next room, the epicenter of the ghost department headquarters, one monster breaks out and Roy Pulsifer turns it to dust. Sitting at the table, the girl orders that Nick is his new partner, but Roy still flounders like a lone wolf. Approaching Nick and holding out his hand, he removes it and says that he has not deserved it yet. Roy calls Nick for a new assignment. They are transported to the real world through a portal toilet, and Nick goes to his own funeral. He almost sheds a tear when he sees Julia, but Bobby comes up and hugs her, and he is immediately filled with hatred. Nick comes down the mountain, running up to Julia and saying it's him. She doesn't recognize him and walks away. Bobby threatens him and Nick tries to reach for him while he is restrained by a crowd of cops. Back to Roy's. Nick learns that his voice and appearance are different now. He shows him his ID. He looks like a Chinese grandfather. Nick asks who Roy is, showing him his papers. Nick says he wins. Roy turns out to be a stunning blonde. According to Roy, they are on their way to check out the new Rotten. Roy and Nick have a similar fate, both betrayed by their partner. At the hotel, Roy pulls Indian food out of the trunk, saying that this hotel smells like rotten, and now he will show Nick his tactics. One of the elevators plays with lights, as if something is broken, which means that the patrol is there. Roy gives Nick some soul-crushing ammunition, which, if hit in the head, erases target from the space forever. On the 29th floor, a light blinks near one of the rooms. When Nick is about to knock, Roy stops him and tells him that knocks the eldest because Nick hasn't dealt with the rotten. 
Stanley Novitsky opens the door, Nick and Roy introduce themselves as health department employees, and he lets them into the room. At the table, Roy starts eating Indian food and Nick starts reading reagent word cards, to which Stanley clearly has a blurred reaction. He abruptly turns into a monster, with a mouth bigger than his head. Roy orders Nick to restrain the monster, but while Nick deals with the new handcuffs, the monster breaks off the refrigerator door and nearly blows Roy's head off. Nick restrains one arm of the dead man, and the dead man is handcuffed to Nick's arm. When the deadbeat drops a milk carton with something hard in it, he pulls his hand away and runs off, grabbing the milk. The dead man runs, eats the contents of the carton and jumps out the window. And while Nick watches in shock as he runs away after such a fall, Roy nudges Nick from behind and sits on top of him in the air to cushion his fall. When Nick and Roy land on the monster and then fly down a couple of dozen more floors, Roy jokes at Nick, and the dead guy laughs at him. Nick beats him with his own hand and dead guy regurgitates gold, very similar to what Nick buried in his backyard. While Nick almost gets eaten, Roy wipes the monster out of space. A little later when Nick fights with Roy, Roy pisses Nick off and throws him under the bus, but he's more worried about his hat that flew away. Back at the station, the officers say this is the first time Boston has had so many dead guy. Nick wants him and Roy to find out what the gold is. But Roy replies that 99% of the time it's a trinket, so they take it to the warehouse and forget about it. But Nick doesn't calm down and asks Roy if he has an informant in the dead world, to which Roy replies that he has the best informant in the world of the living. Turns out Nick had stashed a piece of gold, but he didn't get any information out of the dead man. So he gives him the piece of gold in the form of a bone for a dog trick, which he tells Roy about in the car. While the deadbeat is waiting for someone by the curb, Bobby arrives and takes the gold. After following Bobby he arrives at Nick's house, Roy says he is sleeping with his wife. But Bobby has only come to get information about Nick's stash. Finding the gold, he says he will save Julia the trouble and takes the gold. After following Bobby to the mall, they see a fat man take Bobby's briefcase and leave. After the escalator, Nick catches the dead guy and takes him into the back office, where he also gets kicked in the face by Roy. After locking himself in the freezer, Nick dumps salt in his hand threatening the dead man, but he says he's sick of hiding and dives his nose into the salt on Nick's hand. He turns into a huge, fat man. After breaking down the door and getting out onto the street, he jumps onto the wall of the building, but Roy hits the bullseye and clings to it. There's an accident in the middle of the intersection and one of the cars twists right into Nick, and when he gets up, he has a banana instead of a gun, and that's how other people see him. The dead guy bursts into the building and jumps into the elevator shaft. Nick, who comes running in, sends the elevator toward him and when the deadbeat falls on the elevator and Roy falls on top of them, Nick grabs the case and the elevator flies out of the building and lands on the roof. When Nick gets out of the elevator, he finds Roy hanging from a cliff, and the dead guy running away through town. Back at the department, their boss says that all the TVs are showing a huge dead guy running around the city. Now they're going to be taken over by the Department of Afterlife Security. A bucket of information about the two drops down a huge tube. The head of the Ghost Patrol reads that they found the Aracon pillar that was broken 3,000 years ago. When Nick asks for an explanation, she tells him that with this pillar, dead men can fall to the ground and it is the end of all living things. And until the department picks up all the pieces, combat readiness. While Roy is arguing, a second bucket arrives that says that Roy and Nick are suspended from the case. There will be a hearing tomorrow after which they will probably just be erased. Nick decides to meet with Julia one more time and leaves. When Julia was out for a run, Nick comes up to her again and tells her that he hasn't left but she sees this grandfather anyway and runs away. Roy shows up and reprimands Nick again, and they come to the ferry to relax on their last night. But Nick says we have to act while we have the chance. At night Bobby meets the guy and gives away some detail. Bobby says that 3,000 years of dead men have been trying to put this pole together, but only he could do it, because the ghost patrol wouldn't even guess. He asks the kid to go and do something to get arrested by the afterlife department. In the morning, Bobby arranges with Julia to meet in a couple of hours at a restaurant to remember Nick and relax, and she agrees. At this time Bobby sees Nick and Roy arrive at his house. He takes the second piece and lets Roy into the house. When he goes into the kitchen and wants to take something from the nightstand, 
Mick stops him and Bobby recognizes him. Mick asks to remove the locket from his hand as immediately the whole house begins to rot and even splits in two. After picking up the gold they put Bobby in the car and take him to the station, Roy finds the second piece from Bobby and takes it along with the gold to the warehouse. The cops throw the trinket to her second piece, and as they talk the two pieces begin to attract like a magnet. Bobby sits and tells the dead guys that they have one advantage, there are frequencies at which they can't hear anything, and Nick realizes that this is a hot one and yells at Roy to get out, but the bomb immediately goes off and it's like time stops. The dead guys take all the gold and leave through the toilet portal and burst out into the street with all the crates, Bobby gives the dead guys a command that he took everything, and they start picking up the pole, collecting only a circle, and the sky forms part of the portal. After shooting off all the monsters on the street, Nick and Roy see a new portal open in the middle of the street. They go in pursuit, and in the meantime the dead men come for Julia, saying that Bobby asked them to pick her up. There are already several similar portals in town. Bobby asks to pull all the gold to the top of the tower, and he waits for the last fragment. Julia arrives, and he asks her not to judge her harshly and snorts salt and turns into the true form of a deadbeat. A report on the helicopter shows the deadbeats assembling a pole, but a truck flies into the helicopter and shoots down the helicopter. The truck falls next to the pole. Nick and Roy get into a barricade of dead men, but get rid of everyone, even Fat Presley. They enter the building and realize there is no elevator. On the roof, Bobby inserts the last piece and all the portals from the city close, because the forces are transferred to the largest and most important portal. Nick and Roy appear. Seeing them, Bobby pierces with a pipe Julia and the blood begins to flow into the altar. In the meantime, Roy and Nick try to fight off all the dead men. Bean makes his way through the portal to where he pulls all the dead to check, and starts pulling it back so that everyone falls into the living world. As Roy tries to pull out the cross, the dead guys are being pulled by a beam into the living world. When Nick almost shoots Bobby, he runs out of ammunition and gets into a fight with him, but he loses and lets Bobby beat him, while Roy pushes that very truck down the altar and the altar breaks and all the dead go back. Bobby turns to the portal, but when he looks back at Nick, he fires a bullet right into his head and he evaporates. As Julia lies bleeding, time stands still for her. Nick tells her to go back, it's too early for her, and after saying he will love her forever, she is transported to the hospital room, where the head of the station checks on Julia, and tells Nick that she'll be fine. Summarizing, she reports that the authorities have decided to reprimand Nick as a rookie and Roy 53 years of extra service, an exasperated Roy gets his hat from Mildred, the head of precinct and bites him on the beard, Roy says they used to do that, and Mildred walks away. Back at the car, Roy tells Nick that he has made a gift for him, a new appearance in the living world. Support the channel by subscribing, like and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.